Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Brief Programming. Today we're going to be taking a look at our Make an RPG series. We're going to continue working on the quest system that we started in the last episode. This is episode two, uh, so hopefully you guys stick around and you learn something. I'll do a quick review of what we went over last time, and then we'll jump right in and kind of start adding on to what I'd like to add on in this video. So in the first video, which is the last video, we kind of just pieced together or set up our quest system real quick. I built a new project here with the quest system folder, some scripts, interfaces, and then we created the six uh, scripts. Now you only see five here, but I'll get into that in just a moment, and one of them has changed to quest text uh, versus quest identifier, or excuse me, quest information. And like I said, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but first let's open up the quest class and kind of talk about what we did. We created a namespace so that we can organize our quest system uh, more appropriately. Uh, and then we kind of just started piecing together what a quest is. And we kind of talked about, said, hey, what is a quest? What does it have? Well, we said it has a name, it has a title, or a description, excuse me. It might have a hint. Uh, it might have some dialogue associated with it, meaning like the NPC might talk to you or wh however you want to work it. Uh, it has an ID, probably a source ID, where basically where the quest comes from. Uh, it has a quest ID that you could use to kind of sort through a database to find it instead of using the whole entire object. You might just want to pass in an integer value or whatever quest ID might be for you. Uh, and then again, you might have a chain quest ID, meaning this points to the next quest uh, in the series of quests after you finish this one quest. And then we looked at, or we said that we wanted to have objectives. We said we wanted bonus objectives, possibly. You want, you might want to have the ability to reward the player with like an item, maybe experience, something. Uh, but we might have the option of rewards. And then finally, we looked at, or talked about having events, where basically we want something to happen, most likely when we fail the quest, when we complete the quest, maybe when we update the quest. Uh, maybe you want to call some UI event that fires some text on the screen that says congratulations you've completed the quest or maybe the NPC is going to congratulate you and clap your hands when you complete it or maybe he kind of boos you and does some sort of animation when you fail the quest. So once we, once we kind of talked about that we started saying okay well let's work on creating the quest information up here. Let's create a class that we call quest information. We created an interface to do it too uh, and we took all that and we created uh, this class here, which I've relabeled to quest text, and I'm going to talk about that now since we're in it. Uh, but basically, the idea was, is I don't want quest information was extremely vague. It wasn't that descriptive. So if you came back to this a couple months later and you you know you start working on your project again, you're like, what in the world is quest information? Well, you might not have any idea. So I kind of wanted to do quest text. It's a bit more descriptive. You know, hey, all my string values are probably located in quest text. Therefore, I can kind of pull them out really quickly and we can you know change whatever we need to change so that's what we said for that's why I changed that to quest text I also changed the interface to quest text so I quest text and I changed name to title because I feel like a quest title is more appropriate than quest name it's a very minor thing if you don't want to do that then don't worry about it uh, but having said that we need to move all of our ID our chain quest ID and source ID and ID was used to be quest ID I wanted to, we need to move that to another class, and we're going to call that quest identifier, so it's a little bit more descriptive again. So let's go into Unity, and under interfaces, we're going to create a new C-sharp script, and we're going to call I quest identifiers, or identifier, uh, and then under scripts itself, we're going to create one more class, and we're going to say quest identifier. Like that. I'm going to open both these up in Unity, or in Visual Studio, excuse me. And once we get that up and going, then we can kind of start on it. So let's first, let's work on the interface a little bit. Let's delete model behavior because our interface isn't going to inherit anything. And we're going to call it an interface, of course. We're going to delete, start, and update. Uh, now, right off the bat, we're going to ha also have to add our namespace. So let's go copy namespace quest system and paste that in there so we don't forget it. Add our closing bracket here. So we, now we're including it in our quest system. Uh, and then we need our gets, or right, we need to set up our gets. So what I'm going to do is go to iQuestText. I'm going to copy three of these because we have three identifiers. And I'm just going to highlight them and hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. I'm going to change these to integers because they're all going to be ints for me. Uh, now, if your ID values are going to be not integers, you might want to change them to whatever it may be. I'm going to change title to ID. So that's our like our quest ID. So you can do dot you can do quest.id, right? It's going to get, or excuse me, quest identifier.id. Uh, and then we'll do source, uh, what did I say? Let's go back to quest text. We have chain quest ID. 
and then source ID. So we'll change chain quest ID, make that a capital C. And then of course we have our source ID and I'll paste that in there and we'll do a capital S, right? So here we go. We have all of our different identifiers. Now what we need to do is in our quest identifier class is we need to inherit that interface. So we're going to say I quest. Oh, we need to actually put it in the namespace first so we can access it. So let's go ahead and do that now. It's kind of tedious at first, including the namespace, but it's more organized later down the road, especially if you're working on a team, everyone's kind of knows, hey, this is in the quest system. So let's do I quest identifier now. Uh, we're going to delete, start, and update. And now we want to go ahead and implement the interface. So we'll hit that. We have chain quest ID, ID, and source ID here. Uh, we need to paste in those private members. So let's go to iQuest. Uh, let's go to quest text. I'm going to highlight those and hit uh, control X to cut them and then paste them inside here. Now we have our private members and we can do our return methods or return calls in our uh, property. So we'll say return chain quest ID. We'll do return ID. And again, I'm just doing all this because it seems more logical to me. It's It might be a little bit more typing, you might have more classes, but it seems more descriptive to me and later on I think it'd be a lot helpful. So here we go, we have source ID, uh, our ID, and then our chain quest ID. That's pretty helpful to me. I'm gonna hit controls to save and exit out of these because we're not gonna need them right now. Uh, and save, go ahead and make sure you save quest text too because you need that. And now what we're gonna do is work on quest objectives. So, you might have noticed that I deleted the quest objective class and I'm going to talk about why right now. So in our quest class here, we made a comment where we said, Hey, we want objectives and we want bonus objectives. Well, how do we create those is the question, right? How do we design an objective? And the idea originally is to say, okay, well, we have a base class objective where we can kind of branch off what that class is and we can inherit, you know, all the information that we need that every, uh, quest objectives going to have. And so when I started designing that, I was like, well, you know, a lot of my objectives aren't going to have very similar information. So I was just like, well, we'll just use the interface as the contract saying, hey, every quest objective needs these methods and these member variables. Otherwise, you can really customize the objective itself. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to actually work on creating two different types of objectives. The first one's going to be called a collection objective, right? And a collection objective can be anything from collecting 10 feathers, right? 10 feathers, which is going to be the example I'll be using for a little while, I'm sure. Uh, it could be killing, uh, let's say, five, four enemies, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It, this verb doesn't mean anything, but it's, it's some sort of collection, right? We're collecting something. Whether it's killing, it's still a collection of four enemies, right? So we can call it a collection objective. Uh, and then the other one that we want to look at creating is a location objective, meaning you might want to task your player to go from point A to B. Uh, and then there you might have a timed version of that, right? You might have a timed version where you have, say, you have uh, 10 minutes to get to point B from A, right? And those can be different variation of location objective where you could actually uh, use the location objective as your base collection objective and then or excuse me as your base objective and then create an even more fine-tuned class and that's where your inheritance come from but all these objectives are going to inherit from the I quest objective interface so that in our quest class we can create a list so let's do that now so you can kind of know what I'm talking about so we'll say using system dot collections right and we're going to use generics the li library generics so we can have have access to lists and we're going to say, let's create a list right here. We'll create a private list just for now. And the list type is going to be of I quest, oops, excuse me, I quest objective. And these are going to be called objectives, right? So now whatever I, whatever inherits the interface I quest objective, whether it be collection objective, location objective, or whatever you come up with that I can't come up with, the quest class is going to know that's where it belongs and we can store them in our objective and we can use them and we know that we're going to have these same methods whatever in the iQuest uh, objective uh, interface and we're going to have these like same properties so that we know how to we know exactly how we can access this uh, interface and it's it allows us to really expand upon uh, how we want all these different objectives to work so let's go ahead and start creating that interface now and kind of talk about what we think, you know, objective should have. So let's go to iQuest objective. I'm going to hit reload. 
Uh, and you can go ahead and delete the class in Unity. You can get rid of the quest objective class if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're downloading this file from the GitHub, again, the, the link in the description is the link uh, is in the description below for you to go ahead and download all these files. Uh, but <clears throat> like I said, go ahead and delete it in Unity and then go back to Visual Studio and we're going to actually work on our quest objective here. So what is some things that we want? Well, we know we're going to want a string and we're going to say title. Now, these are all like the normal things that we want. Uh, we'll probably have some sort of description again. You know, everything has some sort of information that we need, like some sort of string information most likely that we need to look at. Uh, and then for now, uh, because I'm really not too sure exactly, we can add on to this interface, which makes it so great. Uh, but what, right now we'll just say uh, update progress is one. That might be a method that we want. And then we'll do another void um, check. We'll say check progress. Right, so maybe we want to check, and we might change this to a boolean that maybe returns true if we need to update progress or something. But for now, we'll just say void uh, check progress, just so we have some information within our uh, interface here that we can add to the collection objective, which is the first one that we're going to look at creating in this video. So now in Unity, under our scripts folder, I'm going to create another folder, and I'm going to call it objectives. And this is where you can store all the different types of objectives that you can come up with and create. And we're actually going to create the collection objective. And I'm going to hit enter after I type it in and open that up in Visual Studio. Uh, right away, before we forget, let's go ahead and add the namespace here above the public class. Like so. We're going to delete model behavior because this doesn't need model behavior. And we're going to say inherit iQuest objective. Of course, we're going to get that error that we need to say, hey, we need to implement the interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, implement interface. So here we have all the proper, the two properties that we created and then of course our two methods. But we don't have any private members so let's go ahead and add those now. So type in private string uh, title lowercase t private string description. Now if you've created some sort of structure or something in the past that you might have because most of our things have a name and a description uh, then you can go ahead and just create a new whatever that's called. Maybe it's like object information has a title and description. Uh, because we keep typing that, that's definitely something that's kind of a very obvious thing that we should create is some sort of structure or class that has all that information in it. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but of course if your project has that, by all means go ahead and do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a couple other variables. We want an integer, uh, and this is going to be the amount. We're going to call it amount to be collected, right? And you might want to say collection, let's say collection amount actually. That sounds a little bit better and it's a little bit shorter right so collection amount so this is the total amount that needs to be collected and then we have a private int current amount right and this is the amount that we have so right away current amount is probably going to start at zero so we can actually set that equal to zero or we can just make a note say starts at zero uh, and then total amount total amount of whatever we need right and now the question is what do we need well the easiest way for me for right now, since I don't have all the files from our other projects, you might have them, but I don't. So we're going to say a game object, and we're going to say item to collect, right? So this is just, this can be anything. It's a game object, right? So anything in Unity, anything in the game world, it can be a camera, it can be a light. It doesn't have to be an item, like part of your base item class or whatever. It can be anything. So we're just call it a game object for now. Uh, again, if you're only going to be collecting like uh, physical in-game objects, whatever they may be, swords, armor, then you might want to have item here instead of game object. But I'm just going to say game object because it's very generic and you can do whatever you want with it. So what we've what we've done is we've added three private members here: a collection amount, which is the amount total that we need, the current amount, and then we have item to collect, which is basically the thing that we need to gather. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up those members as well as kind of changing around. Um, our properties here. I want to move title up, so I'm going to cut it. I want it above description, just kind of because it, bo it bothers me a bit. And we're going to say return title with the lowercase t. We're going to set up our return for our description. We'll say return description. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to set up our three other uh, properties here. So I'm going to copy the description one. I'm going to come down and paste one, two, and three. And then we'll go ahead and rename them. This is going to be an integer. This one will be an int as well and I'm going to copy collection amount and paste that here uh, current amount replace that here and then obviously we need to change that to capital C so we know 
So now we can return our current amount and collection amount. You might want to use this for gathering, uh, maybe creating a string. Uh, there's another thing that you could do um, if you don't want to access both of these. It maybe if you want to only access one of them, you could create a. You can override the the string method. So you can actually create an override string to string method in this class, where it basically says, when I say collection objective to string, it builds. It says you have zero slash ten of an item. So if you guys don't know how to do that, we can definitely look at doing that right down in the comments below if you're interested in doing a two string overload. Uh, but now we need to go ahead and change the script this other one to a game object. So let's do that now for the item to collect. Again, you might just you might not need this, but I'm gonna go ahead and include it for now just because we're kind of experimenting as we go. So here we've set up our properties for this, and now let's go ahead and create a basic constructor. Uh, we want to do a, a public collection objective. Right, and we're going to kind of override it. We're going to create one. Uh, I think for now what we'll do is for a title, we're going to actually just manually create one. Uh, if you have, if you're only doing collection, this will work. But if you want to add like, like, a, like an adjective uh, or a verb, excuse me, like collecting or go collect or uh, just collect, kill, whatever it may be, you might want to pass in that. So you could do a string and you could say adjective or excuse me, verb. Title, we could say title verb maybe. And then it can be collect, kill, whatever. Uh, and then you could pass. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. It seems like a little bit easier. So we'll say, okay, we'll do title verb, which in this case is probably like collect. Sorry, our our uh, our example was collect ten feathers, right? So if we want to do collect ten feathers, how do we need to do it? Well, we need to say, okay, pass in a title verb, right? We need to pass in an amount. Uh, which might be total, we can say total amount, and then we can say int current amount. So maybe you do start up with some. And then we can say, um, well, we're going to start at zero, like we said. So we'll say title verb, total amount, uh, and then game object is our item. Okay, so now we're going to create the title. So we're going to say title is equal to title verb plus uh, space, right? And then we're going to say total amount. So let's say collect space 10 what? Well, we're going to do items. So we're going to do plus another space and we'll say item excuse me dot name. All right? So this is actually going to get game object name. So this could be like uh, feather one. Obviously, this isn't the best case for this because we don't have a, a specific game object yet uh, that I've created in the other unity tutorials you can use the base item and get the base item class dot name and I'll give you the name of the item that you want to collect right so now we have a title and that's a title verb which is collect kill whatever it might be uh, damage anything you can come up with the amount that we want to do and then of course the name of the item that we're doing it to or for uh, and then description again you're gonna probably have to pass in the description so we can do that uh, just here we say string description like that and we can go ahead and set description equal to descript like that and we want to set our item to collect just in case we need it again to item and total amount we can say current uh, excuse me collection amount is equal to total amount and then finally we'll say current amount is equal to zero now if that's not the case again you can set up a you can create another constructor here uh, maybe you don't want to do all this. Maybe you only want to have total amount and current amount. You can create another constructor and a constructor and override this one and have multiple of the same name. Totally up to you. Totally up to what you want to do. I just want to kind of show one instance or one way to do it. All right. So now that we've created this, I'm going to end the video here. It's getting kind of long. Uh, hopefully, kind of understand where we're going to be going for this. In the next video, we're going to continue working on this. If you guys are interested in that two-string override, let me know, and we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll work on this one, and then again, we'll work on the location objective. If you have a specific objective that you can kind of come up with and describe in the comments, go ahead and do that, and maybe we can try to implement it after we implement these other two. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something. Please download this off GitHub if you'd like. I'll talk to you guys next time.